just think we we have some guys, that, even though they're young, they're very mature. You know, I said they understand that you know it's a long game, and that at any moment we can make a run of how we're built. We can you know hit a couple of threes and be back in the game, or we got a couple of guys that can score, so we can get some stops and stay in the game. Um, so it comes with maturity and poise. Uh, I wouldn't say lack of panic, but um. But uh, I do think we do like a little sense of urgency sometimes to where we, it hurts us, but we have to, you know, get that. So if we want to be, you know, one of those top teams at the end of the season. Can you take us through what happened with your knee in the fourth quarter? Is there a collision? Yeah, knee to knee. Uh, it was a bang. Uh, nothing serious. So it was just something that hurt more than usual because it wasn't the first time. Uh, last couple games I've had a couple, you know, knee bangs, whether it's with somebody or on the floor. Uh, so if you hit your knee a couple times over time, it's going to be a little sore. Uh, well, they had me run in the hallway to see to run it off. That's the only place to run. Uh, I couldn't run on the court at the time. I wanted to, especially after the dunk uh, Kawhi had um, in the fourth quarter. That's when I was out. I ran back out of the tunnel when I saw that happen. Which knee was it in? It was in my left knee. Yeah. That being said, are you guys looking forward to the next I am for sure. Uh, I think some of the other guys are fresh. Like Norm is probably he's wanting to get back out there right away. Uh, but I think some of the guys we said we're both pretty banged up. Got some bumps and bruises. Hopefully get you know Kalo back, Serge. Um, those would be great. Obviously you know JV's got some time. We got Norm back now, which helps. Uh, Fred is back. You know in and out. He got some back problems, but if we can keep guys healthy, I think that's. You know, the main goal right now so we can get our chemistry back. Danny, given that last year you fought through a little bit of bumps and bruises and injuries all year, mm -hmm. how, how's it feel to play all 33 so far and <laughs> the only guy to do that on this team? Uh, I didn't notice that till last night or today until you mentioned it. Um, but so the goal for me has always been to, to be healthy, stay healthy, and try to play full 82. Um, so, so far, on a decent pace, yeah. decent track. Uh, but knock on wood, hopefully I don't have to sit out any game soon and or get any injuries. But um, coming yeah. off last year, was it important for you to get that kind of For sure, especially coming off last year. Last year was also a goal of mine because I had some bumping before that, but especially after last year's injury, um, you know, I still want to, I'm not back to where I want to be uh, when it comes to explosiveness. Um, you know, hopefully I get that back next year. You never know. It's never too late. But um, I'm getting up and down the floor and I'm, I'm hopefully able to make plays. For sure, definitely. Uh, longer to warm up, longer to cool down. Uh, <laughs> as you get older, you gotta do more stretching, more take care of the body, eating differently, icing more, and, and activating more when you're warming up. And make sure you're, you're ready to go before you get on the court and do anything. A lot of times, I, I still complain to this day to the, these guys that we need to do more stretching and more warming up before we start. We have a lot of young guys here, so they can get out on the court and just without stretching, keep playing. And I'm like, I'm not ready to go until we, you know, I need some more activation, but. That's part of the process. It's part of a, you know getting older uh, and learning your body and learning how to take care of it better and you know get it ready. The, uh, the standings say there's more parity in the league this year, more of like a deeper middle class almost, fewer great teams, fewer uh -huh. bad teams. Does it feel like that on a day-to-day -day basis, or does it? For sure, like for sure. Um, any given night, you can lose any team, but I think that the teams that were that were bad last year aren't that bad. <laughs> The teams that were really good last year aren't as good as they were either. So, especially in the West, you see that you know, two games you could be in fourth place, and or you can be out of the playoffs. Um, here, same like you know Brooklyn and New York. Those teams have put up some pretty good fights against a lot of good teams, and you can lose to them any given night. And last year, people you know would look at them as a easy win or something like that. But um, it's not it's not like that anymore. Um, in the West or the East, the East has gotten a lot better, and I think the West has evened out a little bit more. I saw it on the TV in the hallway, and I was yelling some words. I can't say to the media, but uh, I was pretty excited about it. <laughs> What'd you win today? Uh, as far as something from the game last night, just some defensive plays, uh, being in gaps, helping guys rebound a little bit, a little bit of everything there. For me, it's the shot, though. You know, but let the coaches tell it is for some on the defensive end. 
but what does a win like that say about this team and its character, the way that you guys were able to fight back, set it down? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I think that, uh, you know, we're resilient and uh, we have a lot of talent and nobody really ever panicked, although we probably had a million reasons to panic last night, just the way the game was going. Um, it's not the way you draw it up, you know, by any means, but, uh, you know, good teams find a way to win and we did that and it wasn't pretty and we just kept clawing and scratching and fighting and finally, you know, turned it on a little bit, made some plays there to, uh, to sneak out of there with a win, but we know we got to play much better. So come in and look at the film today and see what we can improve. After a win like that, was practice day, was it a lighter feel or was it like you guys knew, know the channel focus? Yeah, a little bit of both. I think the, the mood was light. Obviously, we know that we have to play better, but I think there's a sense of uh, a relief um, to, to win that game, knowing how poorly we played for most of the game. So you come in knowing where, where we can get better at, and like I said, we look at the film and, and you know point out all the bad stuff we did, and, and obviously we'll try to improve that going forward. But um, it's hard to win in this league, and you never want to take that for granted. So uh, we'll take them any way we can get them right now. Fred, where does that lack of panic uh, experience, talent, uh, toughness, I don't know. Uh, there's just a sense of swagger that the good teams have and uh, being in situations like that before, knowing how long a game is, knowing you know how just as easy as it can go 17 up, you can go 17 down and just understanding we had a lot of time there and it felt a lot worse than it was. So every time you thought you were in a big hole, it was nine or 10 or 11 and a couple threes, a couple stops, you know, and, and you're right back in the game. And once we got under 10, we knew we, we were in a striking distance. You guys have had that ability all year. You, before you get big leads, you give it off, then you close out games yeah. with six minutes of good play or whatever. Is that kind of what builds to games like last night? Uh, I guess so. I think that uh, you never want to be in those situations. We're not trying to get down by, by any means, but uh, it happens. And we didn't play well for most of the game, and we found a way to, to, to make it work late. And uh, we got guys who've played in big games and um, been down before. And, you know, we, we've all been there before. So just understanding the moment, understanding the situation, and, and what the type of things you need to do to climb yourself out. And, Obviously, it takes a lot of energy and uh, effort and, and passion, but one of those nights, it was last night, we were able to, to get out of there with one. Last night was probably the most extended run we've seen with uh, Pascal at the five, and obviously the Pacers scored a lot of points in the, in the fourth. What, what is it like being out there with that type of versatility on, on the floor? It's fun. It's, it's uh, you know, you take the switch the roles to just being super aggressive and like switching everything and being able to fly around. and. As long as we're still doing work on the defensive glass, you know, we'll be in good shape. It's, once we get the ball, it's scary on the other end. And I was just talking about it with Nurse a little bit about, I don't, I don't know how many ball screens or, you know, how much offense we even really ran late in the fourth or in the fourth at all. It was more so just driving kick, five out, you know, being able to, to make plays and share the ball a little bit, create open shots. So obviously our strength with that group is, is uh, the speed and versatility. And I thought Pascal did a great job there at the five. Yeah. No, I don't think we'll stop doing it. I think that there's a there's a good part of uh, knowing knowing when to pick your spots. I don't think you want to give anybody in this league a steady diet of one thing. So knowing that we have that in our back pockets, um, we usually don't start switching everything. We usually start whatever our base coverage is and as the game goes on and, and we read how we're doing and we always have that in our back pocket to go to that. So uh, you showed in spurts and like last night we didn't really start switching everything until late and uh, it was good for us. So just want to be versatile and, and have a lot of different coverages in your packages. Every time you go to that zone, it seems to give you guys a little bit of jump. It doesn't happen that often. Uh, there's been times we get burned too, but uh, it is what, it's one of those things that just junks up the game and changes the flow of the game. And if somebody's rolling, if a team's rolling and we can't seem to get a stop, you know, we'll probably go to that and see if we can't mess up the rhythm and, and force them to take bad shots. And that's the biggest thing is just teams really um, have trouble, you know, taking good shots, and, and we sometimes we start to break off a long three or a turnover or whatever the case may be. Kind of gets us back on our, our toes and be more aggressive. Well, in the East, we've talked about the top four, top five, how close they seem to be in the, in the standings. In the West, it's like a 14 team race right. or whatever. Is there any reason you can see for the amount of parity this year? Uh, just 
the lock of the drive? Yeah, I mean, it's just how it goes. It's ups and downs to this thing, and, and uh, you know, it's, nothing is ever going to stay constant in the league. Obviously, you have top teams for a while, but there's injuries, there's ups and downs, there's trades. Uh, guys move around, and um, I think the West has been, uh, you know, considered as a dominant for so long, but it's going to switch at some point. And I think we're seeing a little bit of that now where, you know, I, I feel like the last three years that I've been here, the, the East at the top has been just as strong. And um, we're seeing that again this year. So, you know, there's great teams in, in, in each conference, and it's a long season, and those teams at the bottom have a chance to, to get out of there, and the teams at the top can fall pretty fast too. So still really early. Any health update with Kyle and Serge to start? Uh, yeah, a little, little bit. I think uh, Kyle's not going to be probably ready for this weekend, and Serge is a l probably prob questionable. Yeah, questionable. There, I think. Well, I think uh, JQ will give you the official ones. I get them all confused anyway between questionable, probable, all that stuff. But they're they're. Uh, I would say quiet. Kyle's leaning to down to the not so favorable, and Serge is right in the middle. Well, it's, he's got the thigh contusion, and it's it's kind of leading to some other issues, I think, too, with, with maybe his, uh, some spasms here and there. So we're trying to we're trying to navigate through that. He was, made, again, it's a little bit like Norm a while back when he thought he was making a bunch of improvement, and then all of a sudden there was a, there was a setback, and then it kind of that, that setback went away. So these things are tricky. They're tricky, yep. And it, your team seems to have a sense of calm about it. It doesn't panic when things get going bad in games. Where do you think that comes from? Well, I, I always think that um, I mean we're we're trying to we're trying to adopt that as a characteristic, Doug. I think as a whole, you know, just the staff and and the players and but you know all things that hit the floor, you always got to give credit to the players, yeah. right? And I think we got some guys that are showing some leadership in those areas of of um, you know just taking taking each moment as it comes um, handling the highs and lows um, and mo most importantly Doug probably playing each game through right there's a lot of waves in these games sometimes and you just gotta you gotta ride them high or low sometimes and, and keep on playing do you, do you find yourself having to remind them of that during timeouts like keep playing stay the course yeah. we're still there is that how you get through to them yeah, I, th I think the one thing that if I had to, one thing that I seem to say a lot is, is I'll be sitting there in the timeout and I'll say, well, you know, it's not playing very well. Things aren't going very well. Ball's not bouncing our way very well. And it's, you know, it's a five, six point game. We're okay. You know, stay with it. Yeah, we, we are. We are looking forward to it. I think any any days we can have in between games is certainly needed right now. Um, you know, I don't look at all the other schedules. It just seems like we've been awfully busy. I don't know what everybody else is doing, but we seem like we've been awfully busy, and it's kind of taken a bit of a bite out of us a little bit. Um, but again, we we got we'll have at least 10, 11 guys suited, 12 guys suited up tomorrow. We got to roll with what we can and. And talk about this before is we have started developing some chemistry as that game went on last night. And sometimes that's what happens when you got a bunch of new people in new positions and different lineups going on. Not, not sure how you break up the, the schedule, but this last stretch has been pretty tough. The 10 of the last 12 games against winning teams, some good wins, had some guys out. Do you learn more about your team, your guys during stretches like this? Probably, Josh. Right. I think I think that makes. You know, when you look at it in totality, it probably makes more sense that you can see the better teams and the better players, and it seems to put you in more coverages and uh, just more situations in general, right? But again, I one thing I think I've experienced so far in my early course of my first half here is that how well, each game seems to present a lot of difficulties. Like you know you. It just it just does, you know. You go again, go on the road or something. A team that's 
supposedly not very good and they're ready to play the Toronto Raptors because we got the best record in the league or every team in the West is up gets up to play us because we got the more the best record in the East and all that stuff but so I, I like it I think I think each game presents its challenges and that's what we're here for is to is to try and figure out those challenges um, the standings say there's more parity hang on a second Eric does anybody on this side want to ask any questions no I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just pointing this that's, way all day. I don't know all, all everybody's over here. Yeah, yeah, spacing. Yeah, we need better spacing. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Go ahead, Eric. I didn't mean to interrupt you. There's more. You know I love you, man. Yeah, there's more parity <laughs> this year. Uh, does it feel like that on a day to day, and why do you think that? It, it, uh, um, it does feel like that. I yeah. think I think it feels like that every night when even when we're not playing. I'm clicking around, watching games, going, you know, these 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 games. Every every game's going either direction. The Suns go into Boston last night. Uh, I mean, you can go on and on, right? Um, why is it? I think there's better players. There's a lot more better players up and down the league. Teams are deeper. Where do those, where do those better players come from? More developmental coaching going on during the season? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe we're just in a hot streak of talent. Maybe it's coaching, maybe it's um, player development, maybe it's 12 months a year work everybody's doing now. Um, maybe it's the rules, maybe a little bit of all that stuff, maybe, I don't know. Speaking of the rules, <laughs> anybody on this side of you? <laughs> Have you seen the inevitable clawback of the freedom of movement crackdown early in the year? Maybe. Like all, Feels I, like it. Well, yeah, everybody expected it would be hard at the start and then it would be eased off. Anecdotally, that's what we're seeing. And yeah, and I and I just um, my only thoughts are this on it is it seems like it, and it just must be easier to ref the other way. And that's I think that's their comfort level of of they just don't like to call all this ticky tacky touchy stuff and maybe that's the way the game's meant to be played or it's been played pretty well that way for a long time or I, I don't know. I, I, think the, I think the biggest thing is is we all know how difficult it is to ref and that should be the goal is to give them some guidelines that they can administer and I think that's what they're trying to do. The owners and the committees and the people that are doing that are just trying to get some guidelines that can be enforceable that everybody can understand. <laughs>